Yeah, there are some announcements. So first announcement is that we will have a quiz on next Monday, coming Monday. Uh, the portions will be all the lectures till Wednesday's class. Second announcement, in today's class, we will have a lot of uh, areas where we will need to do a lot of waveforms. So I recommend that you do all that in groups so you can sit comfortably so that you are with your favorite partner. Okay, so let's start. This is EE698G, lecture seven. So we have been looking at delay log loops. Let me quickly refresh your memory. So we have this reference signal, which we pass through a variable delay line called as the VCDL or the voltage control delay line. Then we compare an edge of the reference with the delayed version of the same signal. So we detect the phase error using a phase frequency detector or a PFD. PFD will give us two outputs up and the down signal. And we use these two outputs to control the switches within a charge bar. So as shown here, and at the output of the charge pump, we connect a capacitor. So we will, under steady state conditions, we will have some voltage VC developed across this capacitor. And we close the negative feedback loop by connecting this VC for controlling the delay of the VCDM, okay? Now, last class we saw, that is the last class where, uh, last Monday, we saw how this loop was locking, correct? Any questions on that? Okay. And then we started looking at locking non-idealities. So we first started with false locking, also called as stuck locking. So now under ideal conditions, we would expect this to lock to one period of the reference, which is TREF. But if it is false locking or stuck locking, it will instead lock to the minimum delay of the VCDF, right? And what is the solution we found for this? So this part you remember, right? If this was the VCDL characteristic, that is the delay of the VCDL versus VC, and we had a characteristic like this with some reference occurring, let's say at this node, ideally we would have expected this to be the locking point. But instead we saw that it was locking to the minimum value, T min. And how can we get around this problem? Huh. So ignoring the first edge. First edge of what? I and one. That means a reference signal for us, right? So ignore the first edge of reference, in which case we instead of locking to T min, we will lock to TRF. Or the other solution was to set the initial point such that the VCDL delay was more than TRF, right? So initialize VCDL delay to be greater than TRF. So you can do either of these uh, depending on the application and easiness of implementation. So I had asked you to think about how you can achieve this using a, by modifying the PFD. So do you have any recommendations? So the original PFD circuit is this. So the clock and Q. So I have in one here. So this is into, and we generate the reset signal using an AND gate. So this is the up, this is the down. So now do you have any recommendations on how to modify the circuit such that we ignore the first edge of N1. Where do I add it? In the path of IN1. Yeah. Would you like to draw it on the board? That may be easier.
So now I'm going to modify this PFD. This is D, Q. This is also N1. Okay, so this is the modified PFD. Now let's assume that we are using this modified PFD in the delay lock loop. So let's do this as a problem. Let's say VCDL initial delay is lesser than one clock period. So can you find the steady state VCDL delay? So it looks like this circuit should work, but let's verify that. So you have to plot reference, the out signal, up, down, and we see. So you can assume that we are using a current starved inverter. Our T ref is somewhere here. And that you are starting from a point below this T ref. So can you quickly plot this so that you also get used to drawing these waveforms? Okay, let's look at what happens together. So I'm going to include the signal in one dash also here. And then we have up, down. We can include IC. Out, in one dash, up, down. Finally, IC and VC. So it's not necessary that you have to do all of these. Uh, that is up to you. I'm, I was finally interested in the VC curve. Okay, so let's start with some reference. Now the reference signal is not affected by the loop in any manner. So I can draw multiple cycles of it. But the out signal gets affected by the loop. So let me first draw only the first period of it. Right. So now in one, when does it go high? It goes high after the first edge, right? Which means only after this edge will my up signal go high. So the up signal will remain zero corresponding to the reference. The down signal will go high corresponding to this edge, right? And the down signal is going to remain high till the next edge of the reference, which is this. The up will go high here. So up goes high and then it, both of them will remain high for a period of T reset and then they will come down. Then the down signal, so now that this has happened, what happens to IC? This will be equal to minus I naught here, this is minus I naught, because of which my VC is going to reduce. And then it will remain the same value. So VC reducing means that from this point, now my VC is reducing, so it is moving up the curve. So my delay has increased slightly, which means the second edge is going to move in this direction. So let me draw that. So the delay has increased slightly. So now I will simply look at the direction in which VC is moving for the second period. And then I will be able to make a prediction about the final locking point. So the down signal will again go high here. Corresponding to this edge, right? The up signal, is going to go high 
at the next rising edge, which is here. And then both of them will come down, which means my VC is now going to decrease further, correct? So you will see that this VC is going to decrease further till we reach this locking point, TRF. So my, this edge is moving in this direction. Next edge will move further in this direction. Eventually, it will be as if this node is trying to, this edge is trying to lock to this edge. So you'll get a period of TRF. Is this clear? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, let me give you one homework. So you have to repeat this question with VCDL initial delay being greater than TRF. Okay. So then you can confirm that this method doesn't cause any issues if the VCDL initial delay is more than TRF. Okay. Any questions on this? Let's then move on to the next locking non-ideality. This is called as harmonic locking. Okay. To understand this, I'm going to give you an example to work out. So let us consider a VCDL characteristics as shown here. Again, we'll assume that we are using some sort of current starved inverter. So the difference is, now if this is TREF, twice TREF also falls on the curve. Okay, and let's assume that we are starting with a VC value equal to zero. So this is our starting point. Can you find the steady state VCDL delay? when this is locked in a delay lock loop. Please work out and tell me what will be the steady state VCDL delay when we use this VCDL within a delay lock loop. So you can assume that the current in the charge pump and the capacitor values are such that the variation in VC in every period is very small. The slope at which VC is increasing or decreasing, assume it to be very small. Okay, and then you can solve this. Okay, let us quickly check this. So we have reference. So the out signal is now greater than twice the, uh, is the delay is greater than two times TRF. So it has to happen after this edge. So which signal will go first, up or down? So the up is going high and it remains high till the first edge of down. So you'll have a signal like this. So let me directly draw the VC waveform. So now my VC is increasing till here. And then when both the both up and down are high, it remains a constant. So now depending on how the next few up and down transitions occur, we can predict where it is going to lock. I don't have to actually draw all the waveforms. So the next up signal is going to go high here and the down is going to go high here, right? So again, my VC will increase. 
So eventually, you will see that this edge is trying to lock to this. This edge is trying to lock to this. Right? Therefore, we are trying to lock to 2 TRF instead of TRF. This is clear. So the locking point, ideally, we would have expected the locking point across a VCDL to be equal to TRF. Now in harmonic locking, instead of locking to TRF, it is going to lock to N times TRF. Okay, so hence the name harmonic locking because you are locking to the harmonics of the reference period. So now is this a problem for us or is it okay? Sorry? It might lock faster. Okay. It depends on the initial condition, but it'll lock. Okay. Huh. Huh. Okay. Okay. So the answer he has given is uh, so the reason why he says it will lock faster is now instead of this edge having to lock to this edge, it can lock here. Okay, so the locking time, the initial transients might be smaller, the locking time will be smaller, that is it is locking faster. Okay, now he has said that this is okay. Uh, having two TRF is okay. Uh, do you have any comments on that? I mean, you can agree, disagree. Okay, so it is reaching a steady state faster and I have got two opinions saying that it is okay. So it turns out whether this is okay or not depends on the application, right? So now if you are interested only in aligning the edges, then this is okay. But if you are interested in the delay itself, then this is not okay. Let me give you an example. So the example we saw, the motivation for studying this DLL in the first place was that of realizing a time to digital converter, right? So now in time to digital converter, I would have this delay chain. And we said we locked the overall delay of this chain to TRF. Then the delay of a single buffer would be equal to TRF by N, assuming we have N stages in the VCDL. Right now, instead of locking to TRF, if it locks to two TRF, the buffer delay changes to two TRF by n, which means my TDC resolution has also changed. Is it clear? So now, depending on the application, this may or may not be a problem. And if you are interested in the delay itself, especially in case of a TDC where this buffer delay is forming the resolution of the TDC, this is a problem. Right? And this becomes a problem, especially if you consider the PVT variation. So far, we have been looking at a very single curve for TP versus VC like this. But in practice, you would have a fast curve, you will have a slow curve, etc. Now, when you have all these curves, and if two TRF happens to fall in one of these curves, let's say this is two TRF, and your TRF was here. Right? So if this was a scenario, and let's say you were on this green curve, the uh, PVT conditions were such that you were on the green curve, and you happen to start with this minimum delay, then you can lock to two TRF. So this is again like saying that I have designed a TDC, its resolution could be either 50 picosecond or 100 picosecond, but I cannot guarantee which one the resolution would be. So that is also again a bad design. So now depending on the application, this may or may not be a problem. And then you can decide whether to have a solution for this or not. But let's discuss how we can tackle it. Okay. So, so two TRF by n, right? So now I have this TDC. Okay. When the TDC comes and the user is using it, I have no guarantee at what temperature the user is going to be using it. Right. And when the chip is getting fabricated, as a designer, I cannot guarantee that the chip is going to come in either this blue or this red curve. It is possible that let's say for the slow, slow corner, we get this green curve because everything is slower. And it's possible for the chip to come either in the slow, slow corner or in the typical corner or the fast corner. I don't have a control over it. 
So we have just designed a TDC. It could come in any corner. The user could use it at some temperature. So we can't specify, tell the user, use it exactly at 27 degrees Celsius. We have to give a range, right? So we could tell that use it between zero to 70 degrees Celsius, but we can't give them an exact temperature as such. So now, depending on all these conditions, the delay lock loop could lock to TRF or two TRF. And depending on where it has locked, the TDC will have a resolution of TRF by N or two TRF by N. So upfront, as a designer, I am not able to guarantee the resolution of the TDC. So then no customer will buy this TDC, right? Our business is going to go flop even before it starts. Okay, so in certain applications, this is a problem. Okay, so now that we know that this can be a problem, what solution can you suggest? Huh. So you can initialize the VCDL, that is you initialize the VC such that you lock to the exact point. Is that what you're telling? Yeah. So initialize. VCDL for the correct locking point. Because if you restrict only the VC without initializing, you might end up with a form of stuck locking, right? So if you, if I say that the VC is limited to this, uh, what you will limit the VC to this range, is it? If you limit it to a range like this, then it is okay. So this is same as saying that you initialize it correctly and then you ensure that it doesn't cross the value. Okay, that is fine. What other solution? then it will be a problem, especially in this curve. Huh. So that was the second solution I wanted to give. So you ensure that there is only one locking point in VCDL characteristics. So you redesign the VCDL such that if this is the curve you are looking at, you make sure that there is only TRF here. Two TRF is beyond this range. So again, you will not be looking at a single curve. You will be doing the simulation across PVT. So you will have multiple curves like this. And you just make sure that two TRF is well above all these points. Okay, so that you still have only one solution irrespective of the PVT. So now, again, depending upon the technology node you're working with, this may or may not be possible, but you can do a combination of these two solutions as per requirement. Yeah, so any questions on harmonic locking? <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to the third non-ideality. This is called as locking. with static phase housing. Okay, so the ideal locking point across the ideal delay that we want across a VCDL is TRF. Now due to certain conditions, instead of locking to TRF, this will lock to TRF plus some delay. So TRF plus some offset delay. And this offset is called as static phase offset, or in short, called as SPO. Okay, so now if I look at the DLL circuit, we initially said that we achieve steady state when the net charge pushed into the capacitor is zero for a period. And if the capacitor charge pump and the PFD were ideal, this equals to are seeing a zero error, zero phase error at the PFD input. Now this PFD charge pump and the capacitor are not ideal. They will have its own non-idealities. So then the locking point 
which corresponds to the net charge pushed into the capacitor being zero could result in some phase error being present here. Okay, some phase error being present or in other words, the both signals are locking with an offset. So this is called as locking with static phase offset. So now, just as I mentioned now, this happens due to mismatches within the PFD. Due to multiple non-idealities in the charge pump. And due to leakage in the capacitor. So we will discuss all three. We'll first discuss how mismatches in the PFD is going to affect it. We have not seen the charge pump circuit in detail yet. So we'll move on to the third point first after this, and then we'll come back to the non-idealities in charge pump causing a static phase offset. So let's, let me draw a generic PFD. So far, we have been assuming that both these flops are identical. And in fact, we have been drawing without assuming a clock to queue delay for them. So let's now assume that there is some clock to queue delay associated with these flops. Let's say the first flop has TCQ up as the clock to queue delay. This corresponds to the up signal. And the second flop has a different clock to queue delay. Let's say TCQ down. This corresponds to the down signal. Further, we are going to assume that TCQ up and TCQ down are not equal. And let's say TCQ down is greater than TCQ up. So first order of the business is to check if the steady state point will be same as before. So let me take a reference and an out signal. And let's assume that the edges are exactly aligned. Okay, so I'm looking at these signals after the initial transients are over. I'm looking at them under steady state. And let's assume that reference and out are exactly equal. So can you plot up, down, IC and VC and tell me whether this can be the steady state. So if this is the steady state, then my VC shouldn't change. The VC value at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period should be same, right? So please plot this and tell me if this is in steady state. So both up and down signal, we expect them to go high corresponding to the rising edge in reference and the rising edge in out. So the up signal is going to go high after a delay of TCQ up. So let's say this has gone high here. Now the down signal is going to go high after a delay of TCQ down. So that goes high here. So now I'm drawing like this because TCQ down is greater than TCQ up. Now, once both of them go high, they will come down at the same time because I have not assumed any difference in delay from the reset port to the Q port. So then they come down at the same time. So now the IC will be equal to I naught for this small period. What is the width of this pulse? This will be equal to TCQ down minus TCQ up, right? Which means my VC is going to increase here and then it will remain constant. So clearly this is not a steady state, right? So now let's back calculate and find out what the steady state can. Okay. 
okay so now what i want is this ic has to be a flat line right if ic has to be a flat line then the down pulse should go high at the same time as the up pulse so if the up pulse is going here my down pulse should also have the same wave right if i can guarantee this then there is no change in vc now for this to happen the up pulse for the up pulse to go high here we said that the reference has to go high before tcq up and the down has to go high uh, the out has to go high tcq down before this point which means the out signal has to go high earlier okay so i can get a steady state only if reference lags out by some quantity so this is now my offset and what is the value of this offset so this offset will be equal to tcq up minus tcq down okay so you get a negative value and that is uh, that is a convention we have been following so far if out is lagging reference we were getting a positive uh, delay value okay so therefore if you have a mismatch in the up and down paths within the pfd your steady state point will happen only when there is an offset and this offset will be equal to the difference in the mismatch between the up and the down paths okay so then i can give you a question you can do this again as a homework find dll steady state delay when tcq up is greater than tcq down so the opposite of the case that we uh, analyzed now Okay, so this is how PFD mismatches can result in a static phase offset in the loop. Let's see how a capacitor leakage can cause issue. So we have this charge pump. that is connected to a capacitor so far we have been assuming everything to be ideal but eventually these current sources and these switches will be implemented using transistors and the moment you have transistors in the picture you will have some leakage current which means even when everything is off you could have some current leaking through this path you could have some current flowing like this the capacitor could have leakage if you have connected anything to this node such as a switch that can also leak current okay so now these are all leakage currents so the value will be in picoamperes to nanoamperes now i am going to lump all these leakage currents and model it as a single current source in the following fashion and let's say this is some value i leak okay now if i leak is positive then the current is slowly getting pulled out of the capacitor if it is negative it is flowing into the capacitor so again let's identify whether the ideal case of reference and the out signal being aligned with each other can be the steady state point so please analyze this and tell me whether this can be the steady state condition so you have to look at reference out so let me call the current coming out of the charge pump as icp so you need to have up down icp and ic and then finally vc so when i analyze this and tell me whether this can be the steady state operating point if i leak is positive Huh, why? Correct. So then, can you find out the value of by how much it should leak? Okay. 
yeah. So others, please uh, think about this. So under this condition, I would have up signal and the down signal going high like this. Which means my ICP is now zero. Okay. But my IC, what is the value of IC? Let me use this line to mark zero. My IC is a constant minus I leak. Right? Which means my VC is actually slowly decreasing. So if I look at the beginning and end of the period, it will have a different value, which means we have not achieved steady state yet. Is this clear? Okay. Is this clear for everyone? Okay. So again, let us back calculate and see what we should do to reference and the out such that we can achieve the steady state. Okay, so how should my IC waveform look like? We want it to be ideally zero, but now in the presence of ILE, it is not possible to make it zero. There is always going to be some current that is getting pulled out of the capacitor. So how can I make sure that the net charge going in or coming out of the capacitor is zero? Huh. We'll wait for the other story. Bottom plate switching. So you are coming up with circuit techniques to correct for this, right? Now, let us, I just want to find out where this circuit is going to achieve steady state, where it is going to finally lock, right? So how should the loop be such that what change should I make to this IC or ICP up and down signal, et cetera, such that I will have steady state for the given circuit. So I want to make the net charge pushed into the capacitor to be zero. Net charge pushed into the capacitor in every period has to be zero. So if some charge is being taken out within the same period, I have to push equivalent amount of charge into the capacitor, right? Which means I need to have a plus current like this, right? So I need to have a waveform like this such that the total area here and the total area here will cancel out, okay? That means out of the ICP, I need to have some current coming out. Out of the charge pump, we need to have some current coming out. So that means the down signal has to go high much later. And then both the up and down will come down. Now, if the down signal has to go high later, it means that my out signal should be delayed. Okay, so if there is a locking offset of some TOS, then I can ensure that some amount of charge is coming out of the charge pump going into the capacitor. And then if I make this charge, the charge that is coming out of the charge pump into the capacitor, as equal to the charge lost by the capacitor due to leakage, I can achieve steady state. So how would my VC waveform look like? So initially, now this value is I0, which is expected to be much, much larger than I leak. So initially you will see that there is a large slope with which VC is increasing. Then throughout the rest of the period, it is going to decrease very, very slowly, such that the starting and the ending points are equal. So now this is steady state. If I look at the next period, I will see the same waveform. Third period, the waveform is the same. So we have achieved steady state. And the steady state is now periodic. Therefore, it is called as a periodic steady state. Right? If you have taken the uh, LPTV course last semester, then that course deals with a lot of periodically varying systems. Okay. All right. So now I want to calculate what this value of TOS is. 
Now to do that, I simply have to equate the charges. Okay, so TOS into I naught because we are injecting the current I naught for the duration of this offset should be equal to I leak into the reference period. Okay, therefore TOS will be equal to I leak by I naught into the reference period. This is okay. Now let's quickly do a sanity check. So initially, if my I leak is zero, what is the offset? Zero. Does it make sense? Yeah, if there is nothing pulling out charge from the capacitor, then I don't need to push anything into the capacitor to achieve steady state. So the offset can be zero. Now what happens if my TRF increases? Huh, why? Does it make intuitive sense? Correct. So if the reference period is larger, then within a period, I leak is pulling out charges from the capacitor for more duration. Therefore, if that is larger, then the offset can also be expected to be large. Then what is the last quantity? I naught. So then my TOS will increase. If I naught increases, from the equation, you can see that TOS is decreasing. Why does this make sense? So if I naught is large, what that means is to get the same area under the curve, the pulse width can be smaller. Therefore, larger I naught, the offset can also be smaller. Okay, is this clear? Okay, so we have discussed two reasons uh, that can cause static phase offset. Now we have to move on to the charge pump. And by now, you should all be really concerned. We have been looking at the charge pump with only ideal components, and this should be really irritating you. Because if components can be ideal, then analog design would be very easy. Chat GPT would take our jobs. But thankfully, with real implementations, there is a lot of messiness involved. So we still get to hold our high paying jobs. So now let's see how we can implement this charge pump using real transistors. Sorry. So this was up and this is down. So now there are two components. I need to implement a current source. I need to implement the switch. So let's see how we can implement the switch first. Okay, so from your basic knowledge, how can you implement a switch? I can use a MOSFET. So I could use an NMOS or I could use a PMOS. What else can I use? Somebody said the answer, yeah. Current mirrors for switches. We are discussing only about switches now. You could use a pass transistor. So basically a transmission gate, right? You can use a transmission gate where the transmission gate structure is an NMOS in parallel with a PMOS. Okay. So now if the signals are closer to ground, then an NMOS can conduct it, discharge it very nicely. If it is closer to VDD, then NMOS does a bad job. If it's closer to ground, PMOS will do a bad job. Whereas PMOS can handle uh, swings closer to VDD very well. And transmission gate can handle both. So now let us look at this switch corresponding to the down. Now, if I have a capacitor here, this down switch needs to be on when we are discharging this capacitor. That is when the capacitor voltage is going closer and closer to ground. And it needs to act very well, like a proper switch. So what should I replace it with? So I replace it with NMOS. So the down signal is now going 
to the gate of this n mass. Similarly, this switch is on when we have to charge the capacitor as the voltage is going closer and closer to VDV. So what should I replace it with? Okay, so I replace it with PMOS. So now can I connect the up signal here? What should I connect there? So we want the switch to be on when up is high, right? So instead of up, I have to connect up bar here. So now let me show you how I can interface this with a PFD. So the PFD is going to give up and down. Up, I have to invert it to get up bar. And the down can be retained as it is. So I can connect this as shown here, right? So now you can see, let's say I have my up and down signals as shown here. So up is like this and say down is also occurring at the exact same instance as shown here. Now my up bar signal will be a slightly delayed version, right? Which means if I look at IC, I can potentially have some current getting pulled out during this period. And then assuming that the currents are constant, it will remain constant. It will remain at zero. And then we will have some current getting pushed into the capacitor. So correspondingly, you will see that the VC voltage is also going to vary. Now variations in VC under steady state. So if the VC has periodic waveform, that is its end point and uh, starting point within a period is same. We know that it is under steady state, but still it is desirable to reduce the peak to peak variations in VC. So this, you can think about why having variations in VC could be a problem, but for now, just understand that we also would like to reduce this peak to peak variation. Okay. So now if I have to reduce this peak to peak variation, I need to match both the up and the down paths. Correct. The problem now is the up bar is slightly delayed, even though up and down are occurring at the same time. Okay. So what can I do such that the up bar and the down are roughly matched in time? Insert a buffer. So that is actually one of the solutions. One solution is to have a buffer here and then size it yeah but you can understand right you insert a buffer here and then size it such that the delay of one inverter in the up path is same as the delay of two inverters in the down path so now with pvt variations you will not be able to get exact matching across all corners but the idea is you meet match it for the typical conditions so tt corner with nominal temperature and nominal supply for the specific application. So that even if you drift away from that nominal PVT, the variations you see in VC is much lower than the variations you would see if you did not make any change here, right? If you are going to insert a buffer and then see larger variations, then it's really not a good design, yeah? So this is one thing that you can do. What else can you do? Okay, that is, uh, so I will have to see if it works for all possible combinations of up and down. So in one path, it is acting like an inverter. Uh, how would you connect it? So if this is, this is the TOR gate. Mm -hmm. So this is in one, so, what would you? Uh, has to be tied to bar or zero. Now, whether it is one or zero will depend upon the value of in one. Uh, for the inverter? 
in one can either be zero or vdd this is the opposite so if i give zero here does it work i think i have to give one here ha huh. if i give one here it becomes an inverter yeah ha huh. but if i want it as a buffer then if i connect it to zero then it is like a buffer okay Uh, i think this is a good solution this is generally not used now i think the reason why it is not used is probably because you are inserting lot more transistors uh, in both parts yeah. so replace this with a transmission gate both uh, should be ha i didn't follow like really starting Modern and green buffer. So it was the issue. Because the addition of transistors was difficult. Because during most of the use, we had to use some transistors. And then use up, up and up bar and down and down bar. Okay, I think that is also a reasonable solution, but generally not used. Uh, I have not seen that being used, but I'll have to see why it is uh, not being used. but that can potentially give you symmetric characteristics so another thing that is done is that you replace you put a switch here and you make sure that the switch is always on okay and then you try to match the delay of the switch with the delay of the inverter so now this signal will go from 0 to vdd which means the switch has to now be a transmission gate so you connect a transmission gate here make sure this transmission gate is always on and then try to match between this inverter and the uh, uh, transmission gate the solution that you recommended having transmission gate here such that you need both up and up bar here and then another transmission gate here so you need to have down and down bar that actually sounds like a very decent solution so i'll have to see why it is not being used Yeah. Hmm. But both of them will need up and down bar. So you will have down bar here. So the circuit is actually very symmetric. More transistor is required. That is correct. But if the circuit is giving a better performance, uh, two three transistors etc. is usually not a problem. okay i guess we can end this class now so tomorrow that is in the next class we will see how can we implement these current sources using trans okay